we have invited uh, Nick Searcy, who did the Capital Punishment movie. You can go to capitalpunishmentmovie.com and check it out for yourself and see the day democracy almost, almost died. died. <laughs> you will be frightened. You'll probably throw up a little bit at mm-hmm. first in your mouth. And then by the end of the movie, you'll be vomiting profusely because it's just so harrowing. Uh, Nick, <laughs> welcome to The Blaze. Thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for having me, Pat. Uh, yeah, but the movie now is available at Locals.com as well today. Okay, great. We released it. We re-released it today because uh, in honor of the January 6th show okay. that they, they're putting on. You know. well, that's, uh, that's, that's helpful. Uh, what has been yeah. your t- your takeaway so far from the January sixth committee hearings? Well, it's like watching it's like watching the trial in that movie Midnight Express long ago, where the the defense attorney is never allowed to speak. Mm-hmm. They're just presenting one side of things. They're not really looking for the truth. They're just advancing their narrative. If they were really looking for the truth, they would call some witnesses that that didn't do anything, didn't mm-hmm. go inside. And are still being charged. Um, that there's so many people in my movie, Capital Punishment, that never went in the building and their lives are being destroyed by right. the FBI and the Justice Department. And the way that they were arrested, some of these people, like you feature uh, people who, who hadn't even gone into the building and then are awakened by uh, flashbang grenades at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning and they're surrounded by SWAT teams uh, and military units almost, and and then yeah. they're taken away to, to jail. I mean, why was this, how did this become so extreme? Well, I think the, the, the tactic here is, is it's used for intimidation. I mean, there's no reason, these people, the, you know, these are pipe fitters and union workers and middle class people who've never mm-hmm. been arrested for anything before in their lives. And they treat them like serial killers or, you know, drug cartel leaders. And they send these military units down their suburban streets. And it's done not only to intimidate them, but to humiliate them and demonize them in front of their neighbors so that the community Mm -hmm. turns against these people. I mean, these people subsequently then lose their jobs or their businesses because everybody that lives near them says, oh, my gosh, we must have a violent domestic terrorist nearby, and we yeah. can't have anything to do with that. So it's done. It, it, it's, it's also done to intimidate people from never, ever protesting the government ever again, because this could, they're, they're sending a message, this could happen to you if you do this. And you were, you were actually there on January 6th, um, and yeah. you were able to chronicle how many people were there. I was really surprised at the number because I, until I watched your movie, I hadn't heard this figure at all. How many people were actually there on January sixth at the rally? It was the well, it was the largest crowd I'd ever seen in my life. And of course, when you're down on the ground, it's hard to get a perspective on it. But estimates from people in the movie, uh, one point five to two million people. I mean, that's and incredible. Of course. It is incredible, and mm. and that. But when you watch my movie, you see that the pictures that we were able to put together of of the size of that crowd, the kind of aerial shots that are in the movie, mm-hmm. the media never shows you that. No, they did they, not. They have, yeah, they only show you the little sliver that they want you to focus on, and then they don't tell you exactly who the people were that were actually doing the break in. What are the what are the defendants' lives like now? Has it improved for uh, for some of these people, or has it gotten worse? Many of them still awaiting trial and are are still in jail to this day. Well, most of the people for most of the people in my movie, it has gotten worse. Um, they mm. like Dr. Simone Gold, who was recently just sentenced to two months in prison after pleading guilty to one count of trespassing. This is a woman who's never been arrested for anything before in her life. She was a target of the government because she started America's Frontline Doctors, which Mm -hmm. kind of worked against the government narrative on the pandemic. And so they're punishing her for, for, for trespassing. And a lot of these people have been forced into plea deals. A lot of the people in my movie, they've They've been forced into plea deals because their court-appointed attorneys, since they can't afford to mount a vigorous legal defense, 
their court appointed attorneys, most of whom are Democrat, because uh, another strange thing about this situation is that you cannot have an attorney that is not licensed to practice in D.C. You can't bring your attorney from your home state mm-hmm. that knows you well. Wow. You've got to hire an attorney there. And most of those people hate anybody who supported Trump. It's 96 percent Democrat. So they tell these people it's a 96 percent jury pool. And, uh, you know, the, the, everybody in D.C. wants you to go to jail. So you're going to be better off taking a plea deal. And then half the time these people cop to a plea admitting th- that they didn't uh, uh, copping to things that they know they didn't do mm-hmm. just to avoid bankrupting themselves with the hopes that they'll be lenient. And of course the leniency never comes. Unbelievable. Uh, something that I was uh, really taken with in the movie is that you feature uh, Ashley Abbott as she's walking into the Capitol building. She's uh, she's, she speaks to the camera um, about what they're doing before, and then you talk to her husband uh, a great deal afterwards. Um, really poignant and and really powerful. And the the method of police officers actually uh, discharging their firearm that that none of that was followed in this particular case with her. Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, we wanted to not only show that, but also to humanize Ashley Babbitt, that she had been so yep. demonized in the press as as this rabid, crazy Trump supporter trying to overthrow the government. And new information has come out since we released our movie. We have footage of other angles in the hallway before Ashley Babbitt was shot, showing that she was in the hallway telling people to stop. Yeah, She was trying mm. to stop the people that were breaking the doors down. And she was talking to the police saying, you need more reinforcements up here. She was actually, you know, trying to help the situation. And, uh, yeah, I mean, her husband, Aaron, explained it very well in the movie. She was a military police officer. She knew the Mm. rules of using deadly force. And he said if at any moment she had heard a police officer telling her to get down or get back away from the window, she would have done it. But no verbal command was issued. Right. and he shot her in cold butt. He just murdered her. Uh, and it faces no consequences for it either. Um, so, no. What's also interesting is that are, are those are those instigators that were around Ashley Babbitt that were smashing the windows and and uh, ramming things into the walls and being destructive? Are they some of the people that uh, were were there from Antifa? Absolutely. There's a footage of john sullivan we see him in the hallway screaming burn this place down we've got to burn this blank down and he, why why isn't the january 6th committee calling him right i mean they don't they don't right. call anybody like that that would refute their narrative they don't call ray epps who was there telling people to break into the building they don't call john <clears throat> sullivan who was standing there when ashley babbitt was killed telling people to break down the doors. They they don't yeah. call them, nor did they, I, I, they weren't arrested or questioned even, were they? I think Sullivan was arrested at one point. Was but, he? Okay. You know, they, they immediately released. Jeez. And then uh, Ray Epps has never been arrested, and there's plenty of other people. That, yeah. uh, yes. You know, that we don't know who they are because the government won't tell us because they were working for the government. And what's amazing to me, is they continue to hammer this big lie that sparked all of this, supposedly. Uh, the big lie from Donald Trump that there was something wrong with the election. Um, and yet, they continue to hammer their big lie that a bunch of people were, that police officers were killed during this event. Can you believe that they they even blame the strokes on the crowd at the uh, at the Capitol that this that the one police officer died of. Yeah, and the only people that died that day were Ashley Babbitt, uh, mm-hmm. who was killed, murdered by a police officer, a woman named Roseanne Boylan, who was trampled and probably beaten to death by police in the tunnel, My and gosh. then two men who died of heart attacks after the police had flash banged the crowd. Um, the, the violence that day, a lot of that was perpetrated by the police who on one side of the building Mm. were firing grenades, flashbang grenades into the crowd. And on the other side, they were opening the doors and letting people in. So bizarre. 
it's very bizarre, but it's it's it it's not what the January sixth committee wants to get to the bottom of. Yeah, they're not they interested. They don't want to, not no, interested, they're not interested in, that. in the truth. So, are you saying there were there were four people in the crowd that uh, that died that day? Ashley as Babbitt far and three as I others. Know right now, okay. Yeah, as far as I know, right now, two two men died of heart attacks. And Roseanne Boylan, who they claimed at first died of a drug overdose, that was a lie. I remember she that. Was beaten and trampled. Yeah. Jeez. And Ashley Babbitt, of course, was shot. Unbelievable. Uh, and they even they even tried to pin the suicides from the police who committed suicide weeks later. They tried to blame that on January sixth. Uh, it's yeah, like it was. It's like it was such a traumatic event. I mean, right. it, it, it's total nonsense. And uh, I'm telling you, in, in all the evidence that we've seen, the foot, video footage that we've seen, the police were the instigators in many, many cases. Mm. And th- this whole, the other narrative that they push is that Trump incited the crowd to go over there. The, the people that broke the, broke the first windows at the Capitol building, they did that before Trump even stopped speaking. So, my gosh. Who are those people? Right. Why don't they even why don't they investigate that, you know? The name of the movie is uh, Capital Punishment. Capitalpunishmentmovie.com or wh- how else can uh, people get uh, uh, be able to watch this Nick? Where else well, can they go? Starting today. Yeah, starting today, it, you can go to nickcersey.locals.com and you can buy the movie there and you can also go to a site called givemelibertynow.org. Give me libertynow.org. Both of those places you can purchase the movie or a DVD. I highly recommend it. Uh, thanks a lot, Nick. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Pat.